Next to my workshop is a small brick shed, which was the original location of my old Solar Sunday series from years ago. I'm thinking that could be a place to store batteries eventually whenever I rebuild it. The old solar panel system inside of there, some of the batteries have died. It's just down to one battery now. But even with just that one battery, it works that little LED light strip quite well. So I have some lead acid batteries I need to keep charged for our vehicles and jump starting and such. And I'm thinking it might be good to add those to that solar panel system just to get them charged up. However, I also have some fluorescent lights above my workbench that I think might be a good idea to run off of that. I'm thinking I might be able to find a nice little inverter out of my collection, run a wire from the small brick shed to the workshop, and having my workbench fluoro lights running off of the power, the 200 watts of solar panels that I have in my brick shed, I want to be able to turn on these lights without having to go into the brick shed first to turn on the inverter. So the inverter will have to be very efficiently running with very low idle current drawn. Across those three lead acid batteries, I'd expect I'd have a comfortable 1200 watt hours of usable power before I really started degrading the battery packs because I want to keep them mostly at full charge if possible. I'm expecting that we usually get only 72 hours between sunlight on particularly stormy days. So it has to not pull down the battery within 72 hours and it has to withstand six hours of constant use during the day because I do actually film with these lights quite regularly now. So first off, we have a Walmart special Everstart 12 volt 120 watt. I believe it was $14, not very bad. At 13 volts idling, it pulls 0 0.29 amps or 3.7 watts. After 72 hours, there will be 20 amp hours drawn from the battery packs or 250 watt hours. Now, whenever I hook up my fluorescent lamp, well, only one of them, I have three of them after all, it pulls 3.8 amps or 49.4 watts. After six hours of pure of continuous running, that will be 23 amp hours or 274 watt hours of use. It has excessive fan noise, and whenever I plugged in my fluoro light, it had too much flickering, and I worry it would actually kill the bulb. The fan speed is set to the voltage. Then we have the Schumacher 12, oh, Schumacher? I think it's Schumacher 12 volt, 410 watt inverter, which is a little one that my old manager gave me back whenever I worked in California. At 13 volts, it pulls 0 0.1 amp of idle draw, or only 1.3 watts. That's almost nothing. After 72 hours of being on idle, it would pull the batteries down by 7 amp hours, or use 86 watt hours of capacity. And whenever pl plugged in that same lamp, it only pulled 2.9 amps or 37.7 watts, quite low compared to before. After six hours, that would be 17.4 amp hours pulled from the battery or 208 watt hours. Next, we have the inverter that I made the first two videos about, the pure sine wave 24 volt 1500 watts. I don't really feel like re-engineering my battery bank to run on 24 volts, but at 26 volts, it pulled 0 0.6 amps at idle, or that's 15.6 watts. After 72 hours, that would be 43 amp hours pulled, or 1,037 watt hours, which is a bit much for this small wattage need. With the lamp hooked up, it pulled 1.6 amp, with 41.6 watts being pulled. After, after 6 hours, it would pull 10 amp hours from the battery, or 230 watt hours. Next up, we have an older one that I got, around 2017 or so. The Windy Nation Vertimax 1500 watt pure sine wave 12 volt. I'm not quite sure how to read the label on this one. There's a lot of words there. At 13 volts, it pulls 0 0.43 amps at idle or 5.59 watts, which is not bad. After 72 hours of running at idle, it would pull 31 amp hours from the battery pack or 371 watt hours. With the lamp plugged in, it pulls 3.3 amps or 42.9 watts which is a bit more than the other pure sine wave inverter, but that was at 26 volts. After six hours of running the lamp, it would pull 20 amp hours from the battery packs or 238 watt hours. I think for this particular instance, where I don't have a, a large amount of power coming into the system, I would want to go with the most efficient one for this low power draw, which would have to be the Schumacher 12 volt, 410 watts, only pulling 1.3 watts at idle, which is very good. And then whenever I plugged in the lamp, it also had the lowest watt pull. So obviously it's the most efficient for that. 
So I imagine I can plug in three of these without too many issues, maybe even a few more, but definitely enough power to run the three lamps that I have above my workbench. And maybe that can help lower the power bill. And yes, the reason I'm doing this voiceover narration thing, which I've never done before, oddly enough, is because I lost my microphone and so I can't do this real time. But maybe this format actually works out a little bit better. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found the information helpful. Have a happy Solar Sunday.